Hello, today we have Bobby Teal, whose youthful involvement with the Cray Twins led to his courageous actions as a police informer against them and to another kind of very necessary running. The legend of the Cray Twins, Ronnie and Reggie, East End gangsters with tentacles right up into high society, is a legend that's been with us for decades. Bobby Teal knew them well and in the early days helped them and was eventually one of the sources of evidence which helped to bring them down. His book is called Bringing Down the Crays. Bobby himself moved away, <clears throat> made a new life in Utah, in the US and a new family and you say in the prologue Bobby that you didn't tell your family about your past for years you actually you, you had a new family and you you didn't tell them how you'd grown up exactly well the to, to start with I, I, I was trying to time it when I thought they'd be old enough to understand I gave them dribbles of it little bits here and there and certainly my wife at the time, Eileen, I gave her considerable more than I did the children. And I said, well, as they get older, I will explain as best I can the situation. But you must remember that everything I was doing was to almost bury as deeply as I could anything that happened to me up till 69 when I left. The UK. And the extraordinary thing is that your, your brothers, who you're now well back in touch with and they, they've helped with the book, they thought all these years you were probably dead. I mean, you, you, you were well, right out of touch. Absolutely, because they were going up to Scotland Yard for a considerable time with my mum and dad and asking them. And he, they said, no, he's, he's probably all right and everything's all right. And then, they, then Scotland Yard got fed up with telling them this. And eventually they started saying, well, you have to face reality. He's dead. The possibility is so strong, it appears that he's dead. Now, this is where it gets weird. Scotland Yard knew exactly where I was. Okay. Whether they're trying to help me or what, I do not know. But they could have at least got a message to me that all is well. No chance. Yet they knew to the point, you know, GPS positioning, exactly where I was. Well, let's, let's go back to how it all started. You, you grew up in Islington and did market trading and so on, moved into crime quite early, you say in the book, approved schools and prison mm -hmm. before you were 17, bit of legitimate work as a waiter and a ship steward. Then you meet the Cray twins, and it, you describe an almost sort of tribal, cosy sense that this, this was a kind of a family, a, a gang, something fantastic to belong to. Absolutely. They, they were massively respected and at the same time feared. And when I saw them and met them, I thought, well, everywhere I went after that, people would look at me and say, how, like, show some kind of, off, you know, spin-off respect. It was the ultimate criminal celebrity, wasn't absolutely, it, really? yeah. And the fact is, we knew such a lot of people in the West End at the time, in films and everything else, and a tremendous amount of very beautiful gay people, that we were part of it, so they wanted to be connected to us, Ronnie and Reggie, and Reggie especially connected to me because we seem to be on the same page. But you knew, you must have known they robbed and killed and tortured. No. Truly, no. Well, there comes a the point killing, where they ask, the they killing, told you to go and kill someone. No, but the kill, no, this was the killing. As soon as the killing started, uh, that's when I realized this is, this is not acceptable, at least not on my watch. That's, the Cornell killing was the big decider. Yes, they were villains. Yes, I knew, I'd heard a lot of stuff, but not really witnessed much. But they sent you out into the middle of the Solent in your boat to dump a suspiciously heavy, large bag. Two weighted bags, down, actually, Two bags. Yeah. You must have wondered what I was in them that wondered, wasn't wondered, a body. But you didn't question them. You can't yeah. question them. They had my whole family under a grip. So I cannot step out of line openly to them and make it look like... Well, you know, I, I disagree with this. Don't open this bag up. Let me see what's in there. I mean, 
it's not it wasn't done at least in the 60s when you were involved that closely with them yes, there's, there's this good line in the book that somebody says uh, you know once they, they they get you so far in that there's no way you can get out there again. is no way out. and i mean this is the family thing i mean you you were married then and you 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 leave your wife and reggie cray pays for your divorce you know so it's almost as if they're they're sucking you in as, Absolutely. as part of their family and you and your brothers have been running errands and hiding guns and so on but there is this there is this curious point where you seem to panic about it all where they're all holed up in your brother david's um and the, the craze are sort of hiding hiding out there and there's your little brother paul who's only 11 and ronnie who is a sexual predator we, we all know now you know the really heavy duty sexual predator tells the kid to sit on his lap and suddenly you seem to snap you bobby seem to kind of snap and think something's changed well, there was incidents building up to that because they, they'd come over to the Isle of Wight and they'd visited people in Parkhurst and they came over to my house, which was in East Cowes, and they stayed, like they, they had dinner at our place uh, at the time when I was married. So the marriage goes south and I look at it and I say, okay, I'm now involved with them. And they, and, and, and at some stage, there was a party in Ride and this is, absolute quite disturbing but it was Ronnie said the party's moving upstairs the firm move up behind me and Ronnie rapes me so I was fully familiar with this man's psychotic approach now that was the first signal I said well this is this is deadly the second one was Paul when the, your no, the, younger brother's threatened. Yes. Yeah. So, so w what would anyone in their right mind do? I used to carry a gun occasionally anyway. And just for more, more like protection. I wasn't, I, never in my life would I ever think of even hurting anyone or a flyer even for that matter. But this one, I'm sorry, I would have done it because he tries to get to the bedroom he, they commandeered David's flat totally against David's will. I mean, David was screaming, you can't come in. And they said, we're staying anyway. It was a couple of days after the Cornell murder. He tries to get by me and says, no, we're just going to lay down in his quite distinct voice. And I said, and I, I thought, well, it's going to happen right now. And he tries to get by me in the door. I said, no, you're not. And, he, and for some reason, he must have sensed something. And he goes back and sits on the couch and Paul it was sitting with him. And then he actually, so I sit next to him and I, I have, seriously, I have the gun here and I'm thinking, I'm going to hit Paul or something like that because I had six shots in the thing, one in the chamber, and I'd gone and got it from the kitchen and Christine, God bless her soul, is dead now. She, she said, oh, don't do it this. I said, well, if he goes for this, if he makes, tries to make this move, I have to. Then I'm thinking, they're all loaded, they're all tooled up, as they call it, and, and they've all got guns, and I'm thinking, this is going to be like an, an OK Corral type of approach. It's ridiculous, but I'm going to go through with it. And Paul, they, Ronnie actually does begin to doze a bit, and Paul gets up and goes into the kitchen, and that, and that, was, that was it. But these were all signals. Let's be clear, these are all signals to me, building up to the fact that something has to be done, because... Not doing. And it does build up as the story goes on to your informing the police. I have to say, a moment in the book which stays with me is you talking about the smell of that phone box in which you stood, that squalid phone box in which you stood, making that first call to the police that you could never step back from. Yeah, that was that was a. Uh, you obviously you can still smell that phone box, yeah, can't you? Yeah, when you, you think can. About it. You can absolutely yeah. because these things are indelibly in the mind. They, like they. As much as you try and get rid of them, they won't go away. But it, it, and it was it, it, because the day, the, the, the it was drizzly and it, like the rain. I'm thinking, this is a suicide trip. I can't tell my my brothers because they would have panic big time, and I can't tell my family. And I'm trusting that Scotland Yard are going to move on these people rapidly. I mean, they're going to come in like the cavalry, and I'm going to save the day. My, my brothers who are terrified, who have been forced into this, 
I'm going to walk away from this. And my big concern when I did get in touch was, and I'm jumping ahead a little bit, is that that uh, the, 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 the Scotland Yard would go in and they, the children, they, she had two little children and she was pregnant, uh, yeah. Christine. The other, t um, we, we can't really go on, the whole story is, is huge and unspeakably complicated and, and has elements of that 1970s police wheeler dealing, which we all know about now. But there's one more moment where you're all giving evidence in court and Ronnie is looking at you. Again, I get the sense that that, that might come back to you really quite often. It, 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 that, there are parts in the segment you've it, 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 to me, like the shock on the faces, because they didn't think this was going to come up. They did not think that I would come out because when I was asked by one of their, uh, the, the Ian's uh, defense, why didn't you do something about it before today? And this was like two years later. And I said, I did. That's when the courtroom went hush. And they knew it was you that had made the And then they they knew I was Phillips. That was the code name that they uh, that I was given. Well, I actually chose the code name. But when you when you when I looked at them, they were like, if they could have spiritually strangled me to death and <laughs> did whatever. <laughs> we're all shaking here. Aren't I, we? I, they they would have. But but I just I I said I did. And then I mentioned, of course, the famous Tommy Butler. And, but it was so crooked in Scotland Yard. Yeah. There were yeah. people. Well, that's a whole whole other story. I, I, absolutely. <laughs> Bring on Sir Robert Mark. Yeah. <laughs> well, are we all, we're all shaking here, terrified. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh. Well, that's it. I'm afraid we've run out of time. So for this week, thanks to Bobby Teal. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please join our Facebook group. It's called Praise Crime Lords of London. We're a friendly moderated group with over 1,000 Cray and other celebrated gangster videos available for view. There's also thousands of images in the photos sections. The link for the group is in the YouTube description section. I hope we see you there soon.